Hey YouTube, I recently purchased a haiku fan from the company called Big Ass Fans. I personally don't know anyone that has owned one of these fans, so I was pretty excited to be able to purchase one and try it out myself. Everything that's kind of shown right now is what's inside the box. I was pretty shocked once I opened it and removed everything to find how few parts there are to actually get this thing assembled. Starting here, this is the motor itself. So that's the top, and that's the bottom. The bottom here is where we'll actually attach what they call the foils, or the fan blades themselves. So here I've actually removed one from the bubble wrap. I was a bit surprised to see the material itself. They are actually metal. Definitely wouldn't want to jump on the bed and get hit in the dome by one of these. I think that would do some pretty good damage, but... They're pretty durable pieces here. Um, they're pretty heavy weight. There's three of them itself to make the fan. In addition, each fan itself comes with a remote. Unlike a lot of ceiling fans, it doesn't appear the Haiku fan itself comes with a wall switch. Instead, they use these remotes. And I'm not sure if by default they come with two remotes or if I accidentally purchased a second one, but both remotes seem to be identical, just looking at the buttons. Once I get this installed, though, we'll, we'll find out if they, if they are truly identical. Kind of moving on to the next piece here, this is the low-profile mounting kit. I personally have lower ceilings where I'm going to put this. I'm going to put this in, a, in my master bedroom. But they do make, you know, for taller ceilings, a slightly different mounting kit that kind of extends down. So depending on which one you purchase, the hardware kit itself may vary. Now, if you didn't purchase the LED assembly, I'm thinking that they give you this little plastic cap just to kind of hide a few different things. That's my suspicion. I don't know. Haven't used that yet. And then here's the actual hardware kit to attach the fan blades or the foils to the motor. Now, in addition to purchasing the fan itself, I did add the LED accessory. The LED assembly itself is pretty much everything just on these pink squares here. We have the actual LED assembly itself, and then it looks like there's two different fusers that will actually scatter the light itself. Uh, that comes with its own little ins insulation guide, so we'll kind of walk through that. Now, for this particular video, what I'll do is I'm going to kind of assemble things, do a quick recording, kind of reflect upon what happened or how it went, and yeah, we'll just kind of work through it together. I don't have a camera mount or stand, so... I'm using my cell phone, so we'll see how it goes. All right, so one of the first steps in building the fan is to add the fan blades or the foils onto the motor. Now, one thing that you'll see is there are three different colored dots on the motor itself, red, blue, and yellow. And on each fan blade, you'll see its corresponding dot as well. I'll try to assemble this with one hand here, but again, using my phone, it's a little bit tricky here. All right, so once you grab the fan blade, you'll flip it upside down, essentially put the yellow dot on the yellow dot. And this thing is curved, so you pretty much can't screw it up. Then what we'll do is we'll grab one of our grommets, and then we'll grab our screw, and then we'll use the Allen wrench to screw them together. Now, right before you get to the end here, I leave these uh, screws just a little bit loose, but one thing you want to pay attention to is make sure that you get the fan blade inside of these grooves here. You should see on both sides that this blade itself or the foil should, should not overlap. Now, here's adding the second foil. So again, be careful that the foil or the blade itself isn't over the top of this ridge. See how it kind of nests nice in, inside of this groove here. Um, make sure that it's flush. The other thing too that I wanted to kind of point out, see if I can do this with one hand, is you'll notice that for the grommets, these have like this little groove or rivet type thing on the top here. Uh, there's only one way to put these in. They'll be nice and flush once they're done. All right, so now we have all three foils installed. The next step is to install this little plastic clip here. So what you'll do is you'll actually remove this as just a little protective cap during shipping, 
You'll remove that and then you'll put this on here to kind of give it a finished look. However, if you purchase the LED assembly like, uh, like I had shown earlier, let's see if I can bring this up. This guy right here, what we'll do is we'll remove this white cap and then we'll go ahead and we'll install the LED assembly instead. Now to remove this cap, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver for all three subscribers here that really want to get wild. I use a Klein Tools screwdriver, but we'll just remove these four screws um, right here. And then I'll resume this here in just a second. All right, so I removed all four screws. The next step is we need to place the LED assembly on top. There's really only one way that you can put this on. You're going to have to match each of the individual screw kind of alignment here. Uh, just kind of like so here. Kind of hard to do this with one hand. But yeah, you'll just match up the screw lines uh, from where you removed the last ones. In addition, we need to ensure that our wires here are going to be able to reach our little connector here. With this kit, it does come with its own screws. They look pretty similar to the ones I removed, but just note that the screws are totally different. This one right here is for the LED assembly. This one right here is the one that comes with the protective cap. So make sure that you do use the screws that come with the LED assembly. Now that I have all four screws installed, the next thing that we'll do is we'll plug in this little connector here. You can see one side of it, it's a little bit rounded, so we'll, we'll match that up. Let's see if I can do this well with, uh, with one hand. All right. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So the next thing that we will do is install the light diffuser. Here I have both light diffusers. They have one that's called the smoky color here. This is good for kind of dimmer areas if you don't want as, as bright of a light. And then they have just this white diffuser. I personally prefer this one because it matches pretty well with the fan blades here. Plus I like the extra light. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go with this. Now, in addition, you will need this plastic piece here. This is called the lens. And what we need to do is we need to snap this lens uh, into place with the diffuser. So you'll notice there's four little kind of notches. We're going to place this diffuser into place. So to try and do that on camera here, I'm gonna flip this upside down and I'm gonna to try to align the little kind of notches on the side here into place. It's probably easier to do this maybe from the other side, but uh, I'm actually gonna pause the recording here because I can't do this one-handed. All right, so here I have the diffuser and the lens put together here. Again, just kind of go through the sides here and make sure that each of those little, I don't know, I'm gonna call them nubs, are secured in place. You don't want, you don't want this lens to kind of be in here, kitty wampus, if that's, if that's the technical term there. But cool, now we have our diffuser completed. Now with the diffuser, what we wanna do is we wanna put this on top here and we're gonna turn this clockwise. You'll see there's these little grooves in here. I'm guessing they will match up here with these little kind of pegs on the side here. So I'll set this down in place. Just be a little bit careful with where that wiring was. And then just kind of slowly turn counterclockwise until you have this into place. Perfect. So now we have our diffuser in place. It doesn't click and it doesn't make any sort of crazy noise. You'll just kind of feel it go into place. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing too awful crazy or special. Just slowly put it into place, turn it clockwise, and then eventually it'll get to the point where you can kind of jiggle on this and it's not going to come up. So the next thing that we have left, or the last thing that we have left, is to mount this thing to the ceiling. Now, one thing I didn't note, I didn't mention is while you're working on other things, I recommend setting the fan like this. Um, maybe this is a terrible idea, but... I figured this is probably the best way to set the fan down while you're working. That way you aren't putting stress on the foils themselves. In this case, all of the weight is sitting, you know, on the ground flat. That way I'm not going to bend any of these blades. 
keeping these blades balanced is going to affect um, how well your fan performs. So make sure you keep it flat. Don't let those blades bend. All right, so welcome to the bedroom. Here you can see we have just a regular light. Now, when I built this home, I told the electrician to run an extra wire for the ceiling fan. You can't just add a ceiling fan in many cases. Uh, with the big ass fan, I believe you can, but um, yeah, in this particular case, I have all the wiring underneath this. So I'm gonna pull this all down and then we'll start from there. So step one here, and again, I'm, I'm installing the low profile mount. So that's somewhere on page 15, 16 here. These instructions will be a little bit different if you're not using the low profile mount. But the first thing we need to do is open up this. Um, one thing that makes this a lot easier to open is make sure that you peel on the top corner here. Or if you flip it over on the back, you'll see that these are perforated so that you don't have to sit there and struggle. But uh, the first thing that we need to do is grab these. So I'm going to pause this and tear this package apart. Once you have the package torn apart, you're going to want to grab these rubber bumpers. All we need to do is put these onto here. You'll slide these in. So, yeah. In the next piece, we focus on attaching the bracket to the ceiling. In my case, I had to do a little bit of redneck engineering. I had to add these bolts uh, into the stud because the box itself is not rated for a ceiling fan, even though the wiring's ran as a ceiling fan. But one piece that we need to do once you have the bracket mounted is attach, there's this little uh, bracket here. You want these little fins facing up towards the metal piece. And you can also see how this little adapter bracket kind of matches this right here. So you don't want it flipped the other way or anything like that. There are a few nylon uh, nuts that come with the kit as well. You want to pick one side first and attach that. Now that this is installed, you can see that this is flush with the side here. And you'll also notice that there's a little bit of give or wiggle room what we need to do in the next step is we need to take that rubber bumper and get it in between this section here. And once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and take this metal piece, loop it around that bracket, and you will secure it with this little U-bolt. There's also a little section right here. So this will go through the end here, and then we'll attach that with that little U-bolt thing. All right, so we'll push this up. Actually, before we do that, you wanna take the safety wire and try to get it through this metal piece and down, kind of like so there. So you can see this is wrapping around the plate and coming back. And then we'll push this up. We'll get that rubber grommet thing inside there. And then what we will do is grab, I don't know if you can see this, we'll grab this little uh, eyelet thing. And we'll also grab the screw. We need to bring this screw it's gonna be really hard to see on the camera due to angles here, but we need to get this around this metal hook so that they can be secured to each other. This is uh, this little wire here is not very forgiving. All right, there we go. So I've kind of got this loop formed I don't know if you can see this, but yep, got this loop formed. Whoops. So I'll bring this U there. And then this kind of goes through the middle. There we go. So kind of like so. We have the pin, we have this in between, then we'll turn this so it's tight. 
All right, there we go. So here you can see this little safety wire comes comes up and through there, comes out the box at the top. And then we have this little, this is really hard to do here. We have this little bracket thing here, kind of twisted there together. With the fan attached with the safety wire, the next piece that we need to do is actually wire up from an electrical perspective connectivity to the fan. We're going to use these little Wago clips to attach your hot, your neutral, and your ground wires to the fan. In the instructions here, you can see, depending on which region you are, uh, how to wire this. But one thing to call out if, you, uh, if you're a novice at, at any electrical work, you do not need to use all three connectors, um, these three little kind of ratchet area things. You're only going to have two wires into each of these. And again, they give you three of these for each wire that you need to connect. Again, one used for your hot, one used for your neutral, and then one used for your ground. Typically your ground is uh, sometimes just a bare wire. So we'll look back up at the top and get this wired together. So the first one we'll start with is our brown. So all you need to do is just take the brown wire. If it's frayed, just twist it a, a little bit here. Then we'll put this as far as we can get it into our Wago connector. And then uh, you'll flip this down and if you give it a little bit of tug, it shouldn't come out. We'll do the same with our blue wire here. You notice that it has an N on it. Uh, that sounds for neutral. So we'll again open up our little Wago connector, jam this in as far as we can, push this down. Give it a tug, so it's good. Then we'll do the last with our green wire. Uh, this is gonna be our ground here. Jam this in as far as we can. Flip that down, give it a nice little tug. Perfect. So now what we need to do is we need to connect our existing wires from the box uh, to, to our fan. So the green is going to go to your ground. So that's typically your bare copper wire in some other places that may be on a green shielded cable. So that's connected. Next, we'll go with our neutral. Typically in the United States, your neutral wire is going to be the white wire. So again, sorry about angles. We'll push that in as far as we can. Put that down, give it a tug, looks good. Then the last one here, our black. Oops, don't wanna open that. We'll connect to black for hot. Perfect, flip that down, give it a tug. So at this point, uh, we have our fan connected now, if I was doing this again, I probably would have ran the wires to come out on the same side to match, but um, I don't want to take this back down again. So we'll kind of tuck these off to the side here, and then what we need to do is we need to hang our next bracket. All right, I've gone ahead and I've secured all of our brackets here. These are all now mounted. Again, not being super handy, but uh, if you're wondering how do you tighten these, this little uh, ratchet on here is super helpful to, to get the right angle. Um, yeah, outside of that, what we can do now is we can lift this cup up and over. We'll throw our wires inside of here and just kind of keep shimmying this up, making sure not to pinch anything as we kind of bring this all the way up to the top perfect so now we have something kind of completed just like this all right for the last step what we'll do is we'll twist this this will come down 
And then it's going to be really hard to see, but there should be a small little screw hole here. What you want to do is turn this until that screw hole is visible. Not sure how I'm going to do this in the dark since I have no power, but um, what I'll do is I'll pause the video. But you want to take these screws here and put them there to essentially hold this in place. Once you've once you've added both screws, there should be one on the other side. You can slide, you can slide this cover up, twist it into place, and away you go. Over here we can remove our little slip saying that we've finished insulation. All right, perfect. So that should be it. Now the only last step here is you'll notice that the fan looks pretty crooked. So what we can do is take another Allen wrench, which this one wasn't included, and you can use this, uh, this nut right here to adjust the tilt of the fan itself. So that's pretty tight. Can you go left? Let's back up. There we go, that's much more secured. All right, so now you can see it's slowly tilting uh, in the right direction. Again, the more even this is, the more efficient the fan is gonna run. So I think at this point, that concludes the insulation. Next piece is to turn it back on, or turn power back on. All right, so I've gone downstairs and I flipped the breaker and energized the fan itself. It has not started on fire, so that's always a plus. And I've also gone ahead and unwrapped the remote. The remote comes with batteries, so that's a bonus. Uh, the remote itself is how you interact with the fan. So here I can turn the fan on to start the actual fan cycle itself. It's kind of neat inside of the fan as you raise the fan up or as you raise the fan down, you can see which mode it's on. So there's two, three, four, um, and it'll go all the way up to the top setting there. The light works pretty similar, right? Light brightness up or down. So we can turn this on, it'll light up the, the ring. Um, the ring itself gets pretty incredibly bright. Uh, that's on the lowest LED setting. Here's on the brightest. Um, pretty, probably pretty difficult to see on the phone itself the difference between the two. However, if we look at my stark walls here, and I think the phone's probably going to autocorrect, but this is you know on the lowest LED setting. Then here you can kind of see the walls get a little bit brighter on the sides there. In person, it's it's ridiculously bright. Like, there's probably no reason that I'm going to let it always stay on this brightness. So, that's that's pretty incredible. You can also see that the fan itself, like, moves quite a bit of air. Uh, the thing that's pretty neat about it is, from a motor perspective, it makes almost no noise. Obviously, you can hear the air movement itself. Uh, but any fan's going to do that, but the fact that the motor makes absolutely no noise is pretty cool. You can hear it spin up a little bit, but once it's going, pretty much can't hear anything. The only thing that I do have is maybe a small complaint is the light switch. So in order to use the fan itself, the fan itself needs power. What I would do is probably go back just hardwire this on to always be on, uh, put just like a plate on top of it, and then mount this to that plate. While it works pretty well for me because I know, you know how the fan works, I think that this is kind of an oversight for a residential perspective. The reason why is if I have my grandma over, she's probably not going to know how to turn the fan or turn the lights on. There's too many buttons here. So I think you know making it a smart switch where the switch is always on 
and being able to control, you know, just up, down for lights, up, down for fan, on and off, I think that would complement this really well. You can still have the remote for the owner or for someone that is over and wants to, you know, monkey around with the controls. But I think having a really, you know, dummy proof type switch would be really nice. I, I do the same with all of my smart lights in my house. If anybody comes over, they're going to be able to turn the lights on and off. It's super intuitive. Um, this, I, I think, is a... I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's labeled uh, on what to do, but, you know, walking in and seeing a remote on the wall, that is not something you typically see. So, other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the fan itself. It functions super well. In the next video, we'll take a look at the app. Apparently you can control this through your smartphone, so we'll take a little a little look at that. And then the last thing that I also want to take a look at is their integration with Ecobee or Ecobee, however you say it. Um, apparently they have some native integration into the Ecobee thermostat, and that can help control room temperature to make it comfortable whatever room you're in. Instead of having the thermostat sit in your family room and reading the temperature out there, this will sense what the temperature is and will spin up your fan accordingly. At least that's how I think it works. So we'll find that out in a future video, but hope this was helpful and uh, yeah, pretty pleased with how easy installation was.